Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to Covendom, episode, episode five, with your hosts, Brian Kane and Levi Rowland. Tonight's subject is going to be spells and curses. Um, you know, this is our fifth episode. So it is. It brings the pentagram together, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. And five the sacred number. You're getting one step every weekend to becoming a Betty Ford member. I am. Just I've never seen him drink this much. No. He normally, he normally can't keep up. But we're preparing for higher things. You know. What? Like a trip? Like, <laughs> like a really difficult intervention with a family? Complete madness. <laughs> Complete worshipping at the throne of Dionysus. You know? Yeah, that's just yeah. called like liver disease. Insanity. You know. From Great. that comes the deepest wisdom that you can pluck out. Uh, so we're going to ha- go ahead and start tonight. Um, as usual, you can find us on, I'm not quite sure how this exactly works, most of the Facebook pages yeah, or groups. Yeah, anytime, you can watch any of the live uh, Facebook feeds, YouTube, if you're We've on YouTube, We've just changed subscribe. platforms, so, and then of course YouTube, which if you're not a member of the YouTube, please uh, go like our page, Hex Education, that is where the videos are stored so that you can watch them later, Yep. and we've got lots of other interesting videos on that. Um, uh, Christian and uh, Sin Moise do another show under the Hex Education platform, and who knows when we might not have a third one or something else coming up. We also have the yeah. interviews with the coven and different things that, that we do within Warlocks Inc. there as well. So um, we're going to start out with Levi pulling the weekly card. Absolutely. And I brought a new deck. Like I, I change the deck every time we do this, and I brought a classic one today, a favorite of many. It's the, um, the Thoth deck, Alistair Crowley's deck, the deck uh, from the OTO. Uh, back is almost always the Rosy Cross, right? So, very popular deck. Which that's is from the Golden Tom. Yes, it is. Oh, so the OTO, isn't it? Kind of. <laughs> I know. It's older. older. It's actually quite a bit no, older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because before Crowley took it over, it was its own thing, and it didn't have that connection to him that it does now. No, it was from Germany or France? I think, correct me if I'm wrong, watchers, but I'm pretty sure it had a German origin. It had a leader before. Yes. Yeah, but once Alistair Crowley took over, it, it did transform, thing. and he was an initiate of the Golden Dawns. So. Give it a cut. Oh, here we go. And don't forget Mr. the Mr. Crowley. Never forget to knock. <laughs> so the tarot for the day is... Aw. The Knight of Cups. <coughs> Right. Mm. Knight of Cups. So many things here. You know, cups are water. Um, I consider them uh, heavily associated, obviously, historically with love, psychological well-being, drinking, <laughs> um, the element of water, memory, all of those things. But I often read this as a lover, right? Um, a handsome lover, um, a gentle, trustworthy soul, right? An initiate, right? A teacher, but one who's also on the path themselves. So very good card to start with, right? And a magical card, carrier of the chalice, right? Very King Arthur. So we're still getting where it... So it does, it's supposed to do that. Work. Yeah. Group. And right. hello to everybody in chat. Uh, hello, know, everyone. Lots of people coming through, talking about their favorite uh, tarot decks and whatnot. Love it. When I'm looking down, it's because I'm looking at your comments, which I yes. actually hate doing because I look much better when I look at the camera. Wow. But, all about but I can't see myself then. Uh, only Hi, if everybody. Good Thank you for all the hellos ones. and stuff. Yeah. Can't wait to hear your questions. All right. So we were doing do our show and tell for the week. Yep. Sure. Show and tell. So, um, I thought I'd bring something a little New Orleans today. So um, this is a very Catholic city, historically. Um, you know, As a matter of fact, Protestantism had no hold in this city until very late, because um, it was French and then it was Spanish, actually longer than it was French. And we have three sort of saints that are really, really popular here. And since saints are really popularly used in folk tradition as part of magic, I thought it would be cool to bring them in. And um, Joan of Arc is one of the big ones down here. She's not official. She's not an official patron Journey saint. Journey on a pony. Uh, yeah, but she's a big statue in the middle of the French Quarter and um, Orléans. She was, is her city. when this was a French city, she, would have been, she was the patron saint. She, not officially. We have one patron saint officially, and that is... I thought she was the patron saint of France. Uh, she's the patron saint of France and of Orléans. So when this was under French <coughs> rule, well, she would have technically have been. But she's more associated... Sorry. With, no, you're fine, fine. Yeah. She's more associated with like the city of Rouen and stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, where she was burned. But our biggest one, and this is a prayer card of hers, is Our Lady of Prompt Sucker. That is the true patron saint of New Orleans. She is prayed to, actually, if you go to masses mm-hmm. here, during hurricane season at the end of every single mass to protect the city against hurricanes. We actually have um, one in our house. So do I. When yeah. a hurricane comes up, I light a candle, because I've been to the sanctuary where the nuns light the yeah. candle. And they light them uh, perpetually to Our Lady of Pump Sucker. Yeah. And then the third is St. Louis IX, the Crusader King, whom the Basilica, the giant cathedral that we are so known for in all of our skyline Catholic images. Catholic spells, everyone. Yeah, it's very... I thought Catholic it'd be appropriate. spells, you all. So yeah, I have tons of prayer right. cards. 
like Joan of Arc from the Joan of Arc Parade, which we have here, Our Lady of Prompt Sucker. But yeah, it's a big part of sort of the magical tradition down here, and I love it. Fantastic. So I decided to get something from the store today, but it, it has a bit of a story. This is, I'm calling him Peter. I might have to take Peter home with me. I think we've got in touch, Peter and I. Uh, Peter, one of his relatives, or a few of his relatives, um, when we started getting into the shop, I just love these dolls. Um, they're made by a, a local New Orleans practitioner, and uh, she makes them exclusive for Hex. So we sell them in uh, Hex, New Orleans, and Hex in Salem. Uh, they're just, I don't know, they remind you of those little dolls from that movie that went around killing people, right? Wow. Okay. So I, yeah, they don't, they're not a doll that you'd use on someone, I don't think. You know, uh, this could be your healing doll, I suppose, <laughs> for someone, but... Uh, I brought a few of these to some Alexandrians in London, uh, who I'm obviously not going to name, but I brought them as gifts. And they all had the same thought process, that these dolls were going to be for, for work. Yeah. They were going to be for housing, you know, they were going to be used for housing something. They weren't going to be used for any kind of sympathic magic, you know. So I thought it was interesting. They all instantaneously, and they all instantly started sort of gleefully playing with them. See, people are excited. So I'm just going to say, based on that, you know, hail to the Sith. Hail to the Sith. Empire. Okay, well, we can do that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know why that has anything to do with the voodoo doll, but you know what? I'm here for it. I find your lack of faith disturbing. He's a little bit too much into the Sith mythos. I mean, I I'm not too, so. too much into it. Uh, anyway, uh... So, uh, I guess let's start off with our uh, little promo for the show or whatever. Yes. Why don't you go first and talk about uh, what you think tonight's show is going to be about yeah. for you, and I'll do the same. So, we're definitely talking about something that I think is at the core of what most people think about when they think about witchcraft, which is magic, right? Spells, magic, whether it's pop culture or whether it's actual religious practice, magic is the first thing on everyone's mind. Do you really do spells? Can you hex my boyfriend? Um, you know, are you going to put a curse on me? These are the sort of tongue-in-cheek questions we all get. But those tongue-in-cheek questions sort of are hiding a real truth, which is people are fascinated with it. They're fascinated by the concept of can you impose your will into the world? Can you can you change your life, right? Can you do something ritualistically or sympathetically with an object and make something happen? That's what everybody wants to know. So that's definitely what we're going to focus on. And the other part that we put in the title of uh, tonight's show is cursing. And I think the reason we thought about bringing that up is because of how popular it is in the zeitgeist right now. Every single Facebook post arguing about whether it's ethical and are they efficacious and everybody's just constantly talking about their favorite curses and whatnot. It's very, very popular right now and I think we're going to get into what we might think about that. Well, like Levi, I think that one of the things that people forget is that magic is one of the most important essential belief systems in witchcraft as a religion. And one of the things I would say about witchcraft is it's one of the, the very few religions that are a religion of magic. You know, there are other religions that fall under that. But it is probably our most fundamental belief system. It goes into so many different areas of our ethics. You know, last week we were talking about the gods of witchcraft, and one of the things we highlighted about the gods of witchcraft was that we thought one of the criteria was they had to be magical gods, you know. Um, you, you went to, you know, certain gods because they empowered your magic or because they gave you the gift of magic or because they promised you secret knowledge, right? Yep. It was a path to analysis, power, analysis, yep. you know, and that is a huge component. Uh, an interesting question that I think kind of goes around the witchcraft community that you ask people is, do you, did you start becoming a witch because of the magic or because of the gods? And you get different answers. But among the initiates, it doesn't really matter because one comes around. I think, I don't know what it was for you. For me, it was magic. For me, it was the gods. And then the gods came, therefore, soon after. And for him, it was the reverse, you know. Uh, but uh, I think it's essential to what we do. You know, you're talking about our philosophies. You know, we are co-creators. We don't pray to our gods. We don't expect our gods to be our problem solvers. You know, we take responsibility for our own universe, our own path, our own existence, our own choices. 
because of that responsibility, that's where you, you hear a lot of these different ethical things that trickle down into different statements. Uh, however, you know, we do believe that we've asked for, received, and utilized the gift to shape our own destiny. Doesn't mean we do it well all the time. You know, we are fallible, uh, and not everyone is as good as the art as others. You know, that's just the truth of any craft, right? Uh, but, uh, and we do look to our gods. You know, as I said, it's co-creation. So a lot of that magic and power does come from the gods. But, you know... Magic is an essential belief system. It is kind of like the Force for the Jedi and the sure. Sith. Yeah. You know, that was kind of the whole component of their religion is this sort of all this force behind the world of form, which that actually comes from Dorian Valiente, a force behind the world of form. She was a trendsetter before Star Wars. Um, there's one component. Now for tonight's topic, I actually happen to quite enjoy cursing. I think, a it's a, I think it's a great hobby. It could be lots of fun, and we're going to talk about that tonight. However, I'm probably not saying what you think I am. Let's hope so. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Or, you know what? Be careful. You don't end up like Nancy. <laughs> good, yeah. good one. You don't good end up like Nancy. Too late. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> it's true. He hears me. These are my gifts. We, these are these my are gifts. gifts. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Levi's one of my... Dead sharks. It's true. Oh. I just rolled up on a beach somewhere and he found me. I have what swam with sharks before. Um, all right. So, uh, oh, I'm glad you love the Star Wars references. Did you know that Star Wars, actually interesting enough, let's get a little Star pop Wars. culture and sci-fi for a second. Sure. Star Wars, um, they actually, you know, when George Lucas was designing that, he actually pulled from spiritual traditions. That was um, a, yeah. The samurai traditions, uh, Taoism, I Buddhism, think Hinduism, yeah. Buddhism. There was a lot of different real spiritual traditions that go into it. So I actually think that, you know, witches and Jedi, Sith are kind of very similar in a lot of ways. And, wow. you know, the consciousness that's going on, you take the nerdiness out of it, but the consciousness. Likewise, the. The sisters on Dune. Oh, yeah, the Bene Gesserit. Those are Alexandrian yeah. priestesses. They are. I'm not lying. Fear is the... Uh, what is it? I will however, fear there is... is the little the, death. What is the name of the sacred boy? Um, the Quizwatch Hadarach or whatever? I'm yes, saying it wrong. Uh, Quizwatch In Alexandrian craft, there are more than one of us. Yeah, there's a lot of boys. And boy they, heavy. But they still feel the same way about those. That you, you better be very powerful or we're going to kill you. Um, mm, yeah. Shit. <laughs> like... <laughs> You know, that whole scene, and yes. that, I don't not like that David Lynch movie, but that scene where she tests him with the poison dagger, like, it's good. Oh, I love it. It's good. Oh, yes, yeah, so me too. The gong jabal. So, you know, this, this is part of our culture. You know, most of us got introduced uh, to witchcraft as a small child, seeing the Halloween witch and Walt Disney and things Pop like culture, that. Pop culture, yeah. Media. Pop culture is a modern form of myth, but it does actually sometimes carry certain real truths in it. You know? Life imitates art, they say. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, feel free to pop in with any questions, and if anyone wants to be a <laughs> guest caller, just let us know, and Levi mm -hmm. will attempt to bring you in. I can do it, I believe uh, in me. And if you do so, please you know, have a question for each of us, or two questions. We're getting a lot okay. of like appreciation for the shirts, by the way. Thank you. You like the shirts better than my $1,800 do jacket that. I wore That's last tacky. week. <laughs> tacky. Tacky. <laughs> this is probably, I don't know, maybe I ripped it up myself. Wait, because she'll, no, this is tacky. Show the back. No. <laughs> Levi relies on me to be the fun comic relief of this show. Oh my god. Um, okay, we do have a question. He's the integrity. Am I? In, god help us. <laughs> <laughs> if, Jesus Christ. Um, well, no, 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 the opposite. So we do have a question. Um, I think I'm going to word it uh, the way I'm reading it. If you correct me, Mandy, if I'm wrong. Uh, she's asking, do you believe the gods will intervene if they think that you are straying from the path that they see you on, or do you think the gods have that intervention in your life? Um, I think that the gods uh, will simply not get involved. Uh, it depends. If you have made oaths, what, what's going on in your soul? Anything that you've done in your magical walk, every work you do, every ritual you do, every oath you take, everything that you get yourself involved in, every god, goddess, angel, demon, whatever it is that you've encoded into your magical astral book of shadows, mm -hmm. you know, your life, your, your th thread of fate, is something you've designed. So I think that 
first and foremost, I think we're completely responsible for that. I think that if it goes against the grain or if it goes against, you know, I believe that uh, nature finds a balance, you know, and it always will. So I think that, I don't think that our gods quite work in that sort of moralistic way. I've Agreed. always said that I it's think that our ethics are primarily about one word. Intent. Intent. And, you know, and what the whys behind it. You know, there are reasons to do horrible things sometimes. You know, if you mm -hmm. have to kill someone to protect your three-year-old child, well... Still a horrible thing, but it's for a good reason. Yeah. Right. Uh, so you know, uh, nature finds a way. You have to kill to eat. You know, uh, something, plant, animal, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, the green grocer if he's getting on your nerves. I think that my answer to the question is: uh, Is it possible only if you? I think if you have offended something very ancient by desecrating something very sacred, and it would probably have to be something you entered into of your own accord. Okay. Does that make... Does that I clear? think so. Does yeah. that answer your question, dear? I think, I, think, I think I get what you're saying there. Does she? We shall see. Well, let us know if you need clarification. Yeah. Um, second one came up. Uh, what are your feelings on curses that are designed and used against a person who is protected by magic, by witch's magic? Well, I think, I suppose it's, uh, is it called the law of rebound? Whatever, one force will outweigh the yeah. other, right? Um, I've, always, I've always taught, uh, when I teach protection, magic, or cursing, that uh, an apprentice of magic with the basic skills can protect themselves from a master or adept. Mm -hmm. um, it's easier to protect yourself than it is to attack, right? Um, it is scientifically proven, and I can't back this up, so I'm going to sound like but it's Fox, scientifically proven. But I'm going to sound like Fox News. I've got statistics here. I have proof, but no one uh, can see no, it. No, I don't have proof, but I've, I've heard of this. Let's reword that. There we go. Um, a positive thought is a thousand times more powerful than a negative thought. And that's the way our brain mechanics respond to thoughts, you know, measuring them, how they do, and seeing how people respond through certain tests. Yeah. I don't know all the facts, really. But no, I think there's um, a lot of truth to that psychologically. There's a book called The Secret, uh, which also talks a little bit about this. I get to just one occult law. But it's a good occult law. But uh, it, basically the idea is, you know, it's much easier to control your own environment than it is for, for someone else. Now, that being said, there are individuals who, if they really are dedicated to what they're doing, they will spend time awaiting yeah. for you to have a crack in your shield. Um, when they enter into that, however, they're putting that into their, their own work. They're making it a part of who they are. Mm -hmm. It's a recording on their soul. So hopefully they've got a good reason for investing themselves. Um, and I suppose I should have asked the first question, what do you mean by curse? You know, are they trying to get your popcorn to burn or are they trying to kill you? Equally horrible. Equally horrible. I mean. Yeah. So. Uh, um, yeah, I think you got that one. I don't yeah. think I heard anything that I would like, well, except for the secret reference. We're going to talk about that later, but. Um, <laughs> That's actually a very I'm good kidding. book. The problem is it's only based on one of the hermetic principles. I know, but it's just, oh, God, the universe does not give a shit about you like that. <sighs> you know, uh, I don't think it's about that. I think, I know it's all Oprah, Oprah fied or whatever, and that's probably what gets on your nerves. But that's true. If somebody actually can put themselves into that state of mind, it's not an unhealthy thing. It certainly can't do any harm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay. Um, a couple of things have come up in chat, a couple rapid-fire ones. The first one was, um, and I think I kind of want to say something about this one. Um, Liz said, have you ever gotten your ass kicked by a deity because of what you did? Um, I don't think deities work that way. Um, I think that's a very anthropomorphic sort of concept of God. I, we said in the last view, last show, our view on the gods is very neoplatonic. I don't think the gods are literal people sitting on Olympus looking at us sort of judging what we do. Um, I just don't think it works that way. Do I think that I have had a interaction with the divine that has been negative or positive based on my own moral choices or my own life yeah of course but i don't think it's that literal i don't like when i see these people talking about like 
Apollo showed me or this Arisha told me this. I understand that in some traditions it's a big part of how they interact with the deity. Not so much, I think, for us. Like, I, I would never say, for example, that the godhead kicked my ass. Like, it just feels very, very, like, I don't think it works Not unless you asked him to. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just, you know. Um, I have, I cannot, you know, I had to think about it. I cannot re recollect an experience where I feel like my gods were kicking my ass. However, I have seen it done to other people. I just don't know if it was their gods. <laughs> Yeah, that's the other thing is which gods, um, right? Spirits, yes. God? Hmm. There's a story, and of course, uh, true to our show, I'm going to try not to name names. I've slipped up once. But there's a story of, there's actually, a, there was a coven who put a curse on some of our initiates and a couple other initiates, uh, most of whom were Alexandrian, but there were, there were other ones that were not. And... Um, a year later, it came out, and people were starting to spread rumors about it, so they confessed to us that they had done this. Uh, of course, we forgave them, because we laughed, because we were like, it didn't work. But then they got proud about it, and defiant about it, and started talking about you know, why they should have done it. Well, call this superstition on my part, but a lightning struck the top of their temple and burned it down. It only burned down their temple, and the only thing left standing in their temple was the statue of the goddess Diana. I mean... Which happens to be the same statue on our altar. So I'm not sure that it was that, you know... Uh, I'm not sure the gods don't ever intervene, because... But they were also working in such a way that goes back to the first question. Do I think that, you know, that the gods will intervene for protection? I suppose the gods could have favourites. Mm -hmm. But the gods are fickle, so let's not be yeah. too proud about that. Because fate is fickle, yeah. right? And they are. I don't have a reason for any of that. I just found it curious. They took it as a good omen that the only thing standing in their temple was the goddess. I took it as a fucking message. <laughs> a message. <laughs> took it as a message, right? I'm like, no, she telling you something, boo. Because if like, that happened to me, I'd be getting real superstitious. I know, right? You. It all burned down. Everything but her. burned down, but Diana. And mm, this is a, can I, she total, talking to me. Can I give a total aside yes, here? Yes. I get so tired of the image of Diana or Artemis as being this super gentle um, figure. Look up the story. You haven't read the Iliad in a while. You need to re review that story of Iphigenia, where she, uh, Artemis demands a human sacrifice before she'll make the winds blow again, and they slaughter that girl on the she beaches. She was a hunt, you, know. you know, she was. Yeah, it's different um, incarnations. You, know, we've she got the general. Diana. Diana is a big thing. You mm -hmm. know, uh, yeah. she's. She's number two big girl next to Isis in Europe. Uh, so Agreed There's completely. been lots of different forms of her other than the virgin huntress. But even in that form, what's her favorite hobby? Killing things. Just you know, saying. also birth and babies. She's yeah. got a lot of like things going on. Um, so we did have a que another question. Do the outcome, this is the question, um, do the outcome of curses ever turn out to be worse than what you attended? And if so, have you ever regretted doing it? Well... Uh, I once had a boyfriend who I suspected was lying to me. So Never. I suppose you could put a curse on. I, I put a curse on him that he couldn't lie to me anymore. Mm -hmm. He never spoke to me again. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think that was my goal. I don't know why I found that so funny. But I do. <laughs> he never spoke again. He never spoke to me again. So he never lied to me again. Oh God. But I just, you know, at that time I wasn't actually trying to cut off communication. Oh wait. I was. You just don't even <laughs> exist to me. <laughs> so, was that my initial intent? No, but it, I got what I asked for, and actually I don't regret it. Oh my it God! Hey, Samantha. <laughs> um. No, Jesus. Um. I don't know. Um, I think, yeah, I think they can. But here's the funny thing is I think you run the risk. And we're going to talk, I have a feeling we're going to talk about this later when we get a little bit deeper. We always think that. I know. But when we, we are going to get a little deeper into specifically the concept of cursing. I think that cursing, you have to have a strong sort of mindset about what you want to do. Because if you get obsessive about it, you're going to curse yourself. And I, and I think it breeds paranoia. That's true of any kind of magic. Exactly. But I think cursing yeah. in particular breeds paranoia. Right? Well, so can protection. You get so exactly. paranoid, you're like, like blah, 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 yeah, all the time. I, I meet know? a lot of people as a reader mm -hmm. where I do readings a lot. Yeah. I get a lot of like really paranoid clients. Like, who's doing work? What are they doing? What did I find in my yard? I'm like, girl, you found a bush light can in your yard. Calm down. Like, but it's just, <laughs> it's, it's a thing. People get obsessed. It is a thing. Um, so, yeah, no. Uh, questions. Do we have any more? So I'll ask you one. Yeah, we got a little break here. We do have one. 
No, we're good. Oh, I'm asking you one. Uh, he always brings mm-hmm. a paper. Wrote because down. I mm-hmm. want to make sure I'm prepared properly. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I actually didn't do that very good. I've got a really long winter one for me. <laughs> uh, of course. Do you think with all the fridge art Facebook spells out there... Wow. ...that... This sort of phenomenon that we've got the Instagram, Facebook, like, mm-hmm. look, I did a spell, or, you know, I, I've even seen this from, I'm not, I've seen this from some people you shouldn't expect it for, for it's a candle burning with incense, and it says the curse, you know. I know, right. Uh, do you think that all of this um, social media spell work out there demonstrates that magic is working so well for people that, that that's why it's such a thing? Or Ooh. do you think... <coughs> kind of a two-part. Mm-hmm. Or do you think that this is all wish fulfillment for most of these people? Bottom line question is, do you think magic works for as many people as it is currently being claimed? Or do you think no. magic only works for certain towns? Magic works for certain people who put a lot of effort into it. Um, I think that it's mostly wish fulfillment, which is fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, though. That's the number one thing I want to say here is I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I will tell you a little secret. It's not a secret. Um... Everybody I know who posts love spells constantly, and they're beautiful, they're beautiful, like rose petal baths, and they put a lot of effort into it, and they talk about it constantly. They never keep a lover, ever, or their relationships are horrible. Everybody I know who puts... Stop saying things about me. I know, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Somebody else should feel some shade <laughs> about that. Good like, good first, of all, <laughs> first of all. I might not be good at love spells. Wow. Talk about the talent. Um, that's your, <laughs> somebody's spilling their own tea here. Like, you just going to get drenched. fat again. How dare you? <laughs> You Not take, for a while. Take it back. No, you're fine. You're I know. Um, but no, or for example, people who post money spells constantly with beautiful green candles and clothes, which by the way, I think green is wrong for a, a money spell for me because that's Venus in the, in, you know, in the old system and not you know, a money planet, but whatever, we'll get into Where that later. Where did that come from? Green is, is the color green of money. money. That's no. how literal it is. Red's on Valentine's Day. Exactly. And though, like red is Mars. It's a whole thing. Red is the color of your blood, people. Let's think about it. Exactly. This. But no, oh. the most people who do those money spells, though, that I know personally have financial problems. It seems to me the more that people talk about their magic and post pictures and do or things with it, the less that part of their life is doing well. And it's like, well, of course, or you wouldn't be posting this constantly. Well, then I don't mind saying this. Because, uh, first of all, I don't have to do love spells because I'm actually descended from the goddess Aphrodite. This is not okay. So, unfortunately, I'm a bit wicked, so I do get myself in trouble. Uh, but it's nothing to do with magic. Not that kind of magic. Uh, but uh, as far as, you know, what you're talking about here, I think that, you know, there's something we can say to people that is not... You know, it's not technically our craft. It's a very published philosophy. It's, you find it in a lot of early books. It's in Mastering Witchcraft or things like that. And it's, I think its original poem was called the... I think it went something like this, because everyone remembers to know, to will, to, to dare, dare, to be uh, To know, to will, to dare, and to keep silent, mm-hmm. right? Um, these are the elements of, of the good wisdom elements. They're called the Witch's Pyramid. I think it comes actually from the Persians. And at the end it said something like... These are the four corners to build a kingdom or empire or something. Yeah. Like that. I can never remember. I don't I mean, remember the original source, but yes. it's a huge occult thing. I think now. it's Persian or something like that. I could be completely off on that. Or read some crazy person saying it was. But to know, to will, to dare, and to keep silent. Well, to know means that you know whatever art you're practicing, you have the knowledge. You know, uh, mm-hmm. There's obviously elemental. You know, To know, to will means, well, you're brave enough to try to steal fire from heaven. Right? Yep, Prometheus. Uh, right. Well, that's to dare. To will is to will is your your psychic force. To dare is your you know your bravery. Your to keep silent is. So if you're posting spells on Facebook and they're not Constantly. working, uh, that's probably why they're not working. Because uh, you'll get someone like me going, oh, "What are they doing that for?" Uh, and I've diminished your power because I've already kind of thought of you as being foolish. It's okay to, you know, post magical things. I'm not saying it's I not, too. Yeah, you know, that's about to spell or, you know, your little altar you want to share, you know. It's, it's very sick. I mean, I, I don't. Like, no one ever has ever seen a photograph of our, our temple because it's not, I don't even let anyone in there. But uh, Brian on there actually asked me a question once. I hope you don't mind me saying this, Brian. He said, is it true you don't let people in your house that aren't Alexandrians? <laughs> I said, well, that's a bit of a stretch. No, but I no. don't let people in my temple who are not Alexandrians. I have made a couple exceptions, but they were initiates of lesser paths. Yes. Yeah. 
So um, Sherry, not to interrupt, but she's saying exactly, just uh, to give a shout out to you, what, what you're saying, which is that, um, or I think, no, I'm sorry, it was Susan who said, um, um, keeping your one's magic secret keeps it more potent because outside influences are not shifting it or Correct. diluting it. Yeah, Correct. agreed. And it's also very important that you just let it go. You know, you let it go and do, you know, do its thing. Um, I think that, uh, well, to leave, I saying, it's not that I think that only the magic of initiates work. My magic no. worked before I was initiated, and I think his did too. Um, magic is there for people to tap into, and you can be naturally talented at it without training. You're going to run into more obstacles, you know, as do rogue initiates, meaning initiates who think they know better than their elders, and they decide to just push through with whatever they're going to. They're going to run into more stumbling blocks. They're going to learn the hard way. Like all things. Right? Uh, the difference with initiates is they've just got a certain power that they're plugged into that other people don't have, and that power does fertilize their magic. They also have access to years and years and years of experience, mm -hmm. not only written but oral, of try this, don't do that. You know, uh, it helps hone your skills. It also helps hone your discernment. Um, you know, I, I sometimes miss my non-initiate days because I did a lot of very naughty things. Yeah, you kind of... Sometimes they turned no out very well and I had to, you know... Uh, I wouldn't say that... Uh, oh, do we have any other questions? For no, on not right now. Right, one for you, from me then. Sure. Once again, if you'd like to be our video caller and possibly... Get a what? tarot card. What's happening? <laughs> I feel like, I feel like there's some late night commercial where it's like, call Dial us now. 1-800. Ladies are waiting to read your future. Cain didn't really kill his brother. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> My no. brothers are supposed to still alive. It's, wow. I'm an only child, thank God. I think Satan. I don't know. You're supposed to ask me a question. Oh. Do you want to <laughs> okay. Consciousness. Well, actually, I would rather ask this one because I really, oh, yes, them I really so. like this question because I think it's something that come is on, we gotta have some. You know when Purdy wants to come on and talk to us. Why is he doing this? Why are we <laughs> leaning into the mic? Like I said, it's very late night. Like, like, hi. It's the shirt. Whenever I like, wear something slutty, I turn into a into. Wow, perception is slut. reality. Your first <laughs> lesson in magic. <laughs> no, I feel. <laughs> I feel like it literally does. I just want to be watching us, and it's just a woman with like that bad music in the background who's just like, yes. "Hi, mm, have you been wondering about your future and occult power?" You only get a one card reading, but yes, if you call, he'll give. He'll give okay, um, um, so the ooh, we got a bunch, so I, I, I passed it up. I'm sorry, um, but the question was basically, and I um, and I, I'm going to word it this way because I think it's an important question when you're talking about it. Are you born with it? Are some people just born with it? Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Satan or Maybelline. Answers. All people are born with it. There you go. Uh, There's the answer. I don't think it's a... I don't believe in natural witches. Now, what I do believe in is I believe that some people may have been witches in a reincarnation. Once again, don't claim it. First of all, don't ever claim to be naturally gifted and don't claim to be a reincarnation of witch because anyone who's got two brain cells to rub together is going to think you're retarded because you probably don't are. Say retarded. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not... A, I'm I not know. A special ed teacher. I know. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, you call them what you want. I call no, them retarded because they're retarded. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. <laughs> no. Yes, that's inappropriate. No, no. It's a podcast, you out! I'm teasing everyone. I'm kidding. It's okay. None of them are watching. I get it's fine. But, uh, well, they might be in China. I get your, no, I get your point, though. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> it's not important. We're going to move on. Um, like, I had to point. I don't know okay. what it was. Um, no, you were talking about natural born witches. How some people, of course, are oh, not born with well, it. And some people might be naturally gifted to music or dancing or magic. Um, but My hobbies include. It's not something to think about too much unless you are their teacher. If you get to the point where you're teaching a coven... And you as a teacher, you look at that one student and say, they're naturally gifted at spell work. That person has a special thing. Mm -hmm. You're the only person that matters to think that. Not them, not someone else. Uh, it's really just not relevant. All yeah. human beings have the potential to work magic. It, it was the gift given to us when the spark of life came into us. For that matter, animals, plants, have the ability to work with magic too. It is force. Hmm. 
It is the force in all things. You know? the they force. manifest it differently. Let the hate flow through yes. you. It keeps yeah. you focused. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I would say, I do have one thing to add to that. It's I think it is in every person, but I think it's because a lot of people who are, like somebody mentioned the word spell beggars, which I think is a funny term for people who are constantly like, can you do this work for me? Can you do this? Can you do this? Um, the answer is no. No. And or also, give me $500,000. Exactly. Yeah. Pay, you know, it's like, no, that's so cheap. If not that's like, magic is not <laughs> Harry Potter. Like, it's just not. Like, and witches aren't genies, and we don't no, want to be used. Magic is And if we get the suspicion we're being used, we're, we're going to clap back to put it in sure. terms. Sure. But also, I think it's hyper individualistic. I think work done by another person is not the same at all as something you're doing yourself. It's just not. It is okay way. to ask witches for work. And sure. It's okay to ask covens for work. But if you're going to do it, uh, bring them a bottle of wine, bring them flowers, you know, show something. That respectful. You're approaching a priesthood that does have a certain willingness to help people. However, we're not a Make-A-Wish Foundation. We're not, you know... I mean, if you came to me... Doesn't this look so charitable to you? And said, I am quite... I'm way more compassionate than he is. Am I the main one? Uh, yeah, probably. Wow. In reality. I'm probably. having a realization. Uh, I'm probably. worried about it. Um, if... I am just better at it than you are currently. Currently. At um, the time. So uh, I definitely think that, you know, if certain people came to me, I get really reticent to say it on air because I don't want to all of a sudden get a line of people asking me to be Jesus. You know, I just don't. Uh, I've experienced it before being Jesus, and it's very taxing. Uh, I was Jesus once. I got know, tired. They nail you on that cross, it sucks. Uh, and they will nail you on that cross. Just all every that like, single unleavened time. bread and wine. And there is a reason God. why there's a recurring I'm not theme. Carbs. I once had a teacher that said, um, I said to her, I said, sometimes I want to... This is not my current teacher. <laughs> this is somebody from a long time ago. I said, sometimes I want to give to myself to the people. You know, I, sometimes I feel like that's what we should do as preachers. Very Princess Diana. I think it's something you also do when you're first in the craft, you know, and you love the craft, so you feel like we should really, you know, serve. Sure. Uh, the problem is, is that back when we used to be in that kind of service, we had a people that revered us. We don't have those people anymore. There's slowly a movement, but half of those people, like, don't really want a priesthood. So, you know, we're, we've been on our own in our covens, isolated for a long time, and I'm content with that. Yeah. Unless something big happens to change that, I don't see it changing. However, there are people that kind of become like the tribe and they come mm -hmm. to you for legitimate things and we are more than willing to do that work for free, blah, 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 blah. But we don't like to be used and I would personally, if I was going to go ask a witch for a favor, I would be like, hello, uh, you know. Deborah. Priest, <laughs> priestess of the craft. I brought you this bottle of wine. I have a... Notice have it's a, always wine with him. I have a request for... Well, for, that's the traditional thing. I know, it's just funny. It's like, if you bring me wine. Uh, if you bring me wine, I'll make you a millionaire. Not true. Um, and Not then have fair. sex with you after you're a millionaire. Um, but, uh, you that's know, I've got to get my cut. I've got to get my cut. But anyway, um, be respectful, I guess what you're saying. Yeah. If, if you call us, you're like, I want my man back. You know, the first thing that's going to pop in our heads is he ain't coming back, baby. That is the first thing that always comes in my he head. He ain't when coming back because like, you're already showing you're so desperate. Yep. It's just the way it is. If you're already at the point where you're mm -hmm. asking somebody in, on the internet to do magic to get your man Please. back, some things have went wrong, baby. Like, and I don't know that that's going to save it. Yeah, don't. You know, we all have fallen in love and lost love and wanted it back. But here's the thing. Once it exits that door of its own free will, don't, don't work to get it to come back. You know, work for new love or work for the love that you've got yeah. in your life. It's just not worth it because you're working against that individual's will and they already left you when you did have them. You had your crack at it, right? Exactly. Because uh, yeah. that's the thing is, he, I, uh, be I believe in this, obviously, in the concept of changing the world through will and whatnot, but I think... There is also a natural sort of fatalism that does exist that I do believe in, and fighting oh, against that is pointless. People. So we do have some questions. Yeah. Oh, right. Um, what are your? I'm going to ask a couple of them. I, I think thought we that could my just... pan is coming out tonight or something. Is that just what you call your addiction? That's what Val calls my. No, that would be Dionysus. <laughs> okay, making uh, sure which I only god. I have that... one addiction, and that's wine. 
okay. and witchcraft, two addictions, and sex, three addictions. Three. You're adding them up. Oh, and quick. coffee, four. Coffee's not that bad. I got rid of cigarettes, though. Mm-hmm. You didn't. I'm almost there. It's happening. Eyes. Don't, don't, you don't tell me the what Lord I'm doing with my life. How dare you? Um, so we do have a, cu- a couple Beelzebub. of ones. Beelzebub. Big fan. Beelzebub. Um, oh my god, we've missed a lot. Okay, so we'll start at the top and work our way down. Let's try to do a little quick on these because I've gotten a little behind. What are your thoughts on hereditary curses? So like, you know, my family is cursed. I don't think I believe in I don't actually either, um, necessarily. Sorry, it sounds too fairy tale to me. It does to me too. I think that, um, I know that a lot of people are going to disagree with this, but um, it's just, I don't think souls work that way. I don't think, you know, I think it reminds me so much of what Jesus said. when How we powerful him. would you have to be to curse an entire our family. family or that concept of like when they ask Jesus like what is this man's sin or the sin of his father that made him to be like this yeah, and Jesus yeah. said there's nothing to do with it um, so that's unfortunately I just don't think I it don't works that it. way I think it's blocks you know <laughs> um, the other one was somebody was talking about how you would never go to a worker and ask for something this is um, Elohim I believe um, you would never go to somebody like a doctor and say I want a new nose but I want it for free so we're talking about paying for magic uh, yeah. Well, we don't necessarily do that. Mm-hmm. Um, if you came and asked me to make you a millionaire, I'd want 20% up front. Meaning... <laughs> you only got paid if it worked. Uh, or 20%. I want a, In writing, I get 20% if it works. Yeah. Um, that's kind of a joke. Um, in our craft, magic is considered holy, and we are a priesthood, so we don't typically charge people for spell work. However... You know, I think that it's, you know, there's certain things, like you might work for your time. You know, the labor is worth their hire, they say. Uh, you can work for your time. You know, if somebody's practicing some sort of healing art and they're giving their time and they've got a professional table and they're doing Reiki or whatever the heck they're doing or people are reading tarot or giving their time or doing whatever they're doing or people are selling, you know, magical wares like we do in our shop and giving their time and, you know, bringing these things together... That's the laborers where they're the higher. If you come to me and you say, I want my man back, and I say, that will be $500, take your money, and then use my craft for it, that's, that's diluting something. It's not holy anymore. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, but like I said, I've known a few witches to do that to be, to teach someone a lesson. Yeah. You're disrespecting what we do. You're going to come to me begging for things where you're going to pay for me to even have to have this conversation. So I think it just is very situational. But technically speaking, we're taught not to take money for the use of our holy art, um, which usually translates to our teachings, initiations, things like that. But, you know, if somebody comes to you and they're like, I'm dying of AIDS, and you're like, give me... $5,000 $5,000 and I can cure you. Well, there's, what, what are the problems here? That's cruelty. First of all, it's not, you're not good to cure them. Magic doesn't work that way. You know, it's, you, know you might stave it off. Uh, but, you know, uh, very unlikely if you're that sort of person, you're going to perform that sort of We don't equate magic with thing. miracles. There's a difference. Uh, not generally. Yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a subtle... We approach it scientifically. Linguist. Um, uh, yeah. Not saying it's not possible to yeah. make somebody with... Something like that. Live a very long time, but you're not, you know. Uh, it's not the same thing. It's never happened, so I, there's not a magician on earth that's done it so far that I'm aware of. So, but uh, in any case, that is a situation to where that person's obviously using that person's vulnerability. We're taught you would never do that. You would either say, I can't help you, mm-hmm. or I'll try to help you, and I'm obviously not taking any money. However, if they bought me a bottle of wine, I would be completely... That would be... A gift is fine. I mean, nobody's talking about a gift. That's right? about... Yeah, a small gift. A who token of affection. Of you know, like, right. hey, you're a priest. You're a priestess. Just like if you went to see Father Thomas. You know, you might invite, if you're Catholic, you invite Fa- Father Thomas over to Saturday yeah, dinner or whatever. You know, they do. Right. Um, I mean, except to keep him, you know, his mouth shut about what happened in the rectory. Respect. Hold you know, uh, that's nice. That's kind. You know, used to be that for workers, you might bring them chickens or something like that. Uh, so, um, in our tradition, in the European religious tradition of witchcraft, we don't generally accept money for the use of the art. However, everyone has the right to make their own choices, and there may be times when I might get a bit cheeky about it if the situation were to arise, okay. and I was feeling devilish. Okay, I see that. So, 
Somebody brought something up that I want to address, and it's not a question, um, but it's something that I want to talk about. Somebody on here said about when we were talking about we don't really believe in her, we personally do not really believe in strong hereditary, oh my God, my bloodline is cursed kind of things. And somebody said, well, you don't believe because you haven't experienced it or whatever. Okay, let me say one thing about this. Um, I am not here for the conversation about magic that happens in some circles right now that I think is unfortunately really common, where in my opinion, it is just riddled, like riddled with the worst, like superstitious paranoia. Like magic, everything is magic, everything is magic. The reason you lost the job, the reason your mom is mad at you, the reason, you know, the squirrels are, you know, screwing up the garden. I mean, it is just this constant, unending, superstitious worldview that I think We're is not here toxic. for anyone's I'm not delusions. here for that. That's delusional. Magic to me is thurgy and thaumaturgy. It is a divine and a personal experience. It is something of changing the world around you through mind. It is psychological. It is beautiful. It is not about pissing in a jar because the neighbor is stealing stuff out of your mailbox on the regular and you think that he's doing something to your cat to make sure that you got cirrhosis. No, you got that because you drank. Like, you know, it's just, I, I just can't deal with this. I'm sorry. Like, if that's the kind of magic you're into, where it's constant, incessant, just superstition and paranoia, no. Well, no. I mean, it's totally fine for everyone to have their own opinions. To, sure. You know, perhaps you've experienced something from the sci-fi channel I never have, you know. Yeah. Uh, however, there is, there is cer certainly is not any evidence of this being a thing. Uh, I mean, I've met occultists throughout the entire world, and that's not even a joke. And so is he. Like we, we know, met some people. We know like most of the prominent authors out there. We know most of the prominent practitioners. We've been to London. We've been to France. We're going We've to Rome. Seen some We've been to Lucas. He's going to Egypt. Uh, I've never met anyone in the occult who thinks that's real. So I've met a lot of people. If you've had some real, sort so. of vast experience, or if your great grandmother was holding the sacred craft that. No one else knows about. Well, we just simply are skeptical and we don't yeah, believe you. It's not a judgment. It's hurt just your feelings. Well, it kind of is. I'm sorry. I would suggest if you really care about it that much, deliver the proof. If you want to be the one to prove it to the world, then prove it by all means. Like if somebody came to me and proved to me that there was this old witchcraft tradition that was in their family for 500 years and I actually believed it and they had material and it was evidence, but they said, Shh, you can't tell anyone. Well, I'd be all for Some, it. Yes, and somebody said something brilliant here. Yeah. How much of this is a self-fulfilling prophecy? Where, yeah. like, grandma said it, mom said it, I said it, we're cursed, life's awful, it's going to be bad for us because of the curse. Well, How much yeah. of it is an excuse? Yeah, or you're going to manifest it. You're literally going to make that happen. When I started talking happen. about this earlier today with witches' beliefs, we believe in personal responsibility, meaning I can't blame my existence on a hereditary curse or what the goddess or god are angry at me or because some other worker is going to try to come at me. Do you know how many workers are coming at me right now? Probably a lot, you know? But they're also probably all fucktards. <laughs> Again with this. <laughs> I might have a few gardenarians who've put me in something, but the reality, and you know, I'd be way more afraid of them than I would most everyone else. But the reality of the situation is, is that this isn't something I'm concerned about. No. I'm doing what I'm doing, and whatever reason they have for worrying about what I'm doing is not something I'm worried about. That's just logic. It's law of the Pharaoh. You're gonna have a lot of people. I also have a lot of people praying to me, essentially. No. You know. You don't know. Do you read That's my much emails? too vulgar display of power, Karis. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes. Um, You're really good. He's really good with these buttons. I'm trying on the buttons, girl. Yeah. Okay. So a couple of things here. Um, uh, yeah, this topic gets a little tricky because somebody's saying something that I think is going to lead us to an interesting conversation, and I want to bring it up. Um, oh, and if we offended you, whoever you were, I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're such a gentle lot. Don't come in here and ask a question and then get QQ about the answer. You don't have to agree with it, but if you're going to get QQ about it, you might want to keep Nobody it to yourself. Did, no. I, don't know what, I don't know what you read. I know, I don't know what I read. He's, yeah. You said something along the lines of you've never experienced it before. Well, why ask us the question then? Or it yeah. might be... Did I come off cross as somebody who had an an cursed ancestry? Maybe you are. Well, I am. It's all pain, making sense now. <laughs> it's all making sense now. You He's poisoned it. inherently. I'll stop being mean. No, you're fine. Um, a couple of things here. Uh, one of the things that somebody brought up was evidence, documented magic, what makes magic valid to you. Mm -hmm. um, here's where I'm going to not be liked at all. Um, 
I think, and we this might is, have a different opinion about. We this. might. I think we do, and I, this is where a lot of people in the craft world and the occult world and my personal circle of friends kind of just look away from me and go, "Yeah, no." Um, I am one hundred percent not here for what I call the scientific approach to witchcraft, and what I mean by that is, is um, it was very popular in the late nineteenth century and early twentieth century to scientize magic. This happened particularly with mediums, right, in the spiritualist movement. But it also happened in the occult world, too, where it was all still these... Still Yeah, it still exists, but let me go ahead and tell you a little secret. If you think that you're quoting something scientific and really academic because of this some parapsychical research corporation or, or organization that exists in the world, let me go ahead and tell you a little secret as somebody who travels around with a lot of academics. They all think you're pathetic. <laughs> like, the real academic world does not participate in this at all. It is it is dead in the water. If you think that because one study in like 1982 showed that one person <laughs> could flip the right card over and guess it more than twice in a row, I'm sorry to tell you, the era of that is dead. Those organizations are mocked relentlessly. They've been shown to be fraudulent. They're full of hucksters. Like, this is not how we win this conversation. This is not how we live our art the best. It is like begging for scraps, and I'm not here to beg. I'm a priest. So, like, I am not here to beg at anybody's table. I'm not going to the table of Richard Dawkins and the scientific materialist and saying, but, but, I have one I thing. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> love, love the button choice. <laughs> but it's my, it's my faith that makes me think this way. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to the table of the hard sciences and begging, like a, like a pauper. Won't you accept my little pitiful study? No, I'm questioning the very foundation of their beliefs. What your, do you think about quantum physics? Quantum physics, the guy who, was it Feinberg? Correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody here knows a lot about it, who said if you think you, you know. You definitely probably know more about it than I do. But I think if you think curious. you know quantum physics, you don't. The guy who founded the friggin' theory said that. Um, you know, if you're Deepak Chopra quoting things on quantum physics, I'm not listening because you don't understand quantum physics. Um, but I'm not begging at the table of science. I'm demanding that they make account for themselves. I'm saying that the reductive materialist naturalist worldview is wrong. And I'm going to start there. I'm not going to start with, well, you're right about everything, but I found this one lady in California who's real. <laughs> like, no. Levi's buzz has kicked in. No. Um, <laughs> yes, you can post. Yeah. On this new platform, you can post questions to Facebook. We get all the questions from YouTube and Facebook for us here. It's, it's amazing. I don't see any YouTube questions, though, do we? They're mixed in with all of them. Why is this is just a big string of um, them. So, yes. I mean, yeah. Levi's the one handling the computer because they don't trust me with those sorts of I don't. Toys. Not even a little bit. You know, I, get the skull, I get the throne of skulls. I don't get to play with the laptop. I love, what Laura, <laughs> I love Laura's comment on here. So many people claim to be cursed because it alleviates them of responsibility and accountability. Well, that's what we're yes, saying from the beginning. Yes, ma'am. Like, uh, now, yes, ma'am. I'm not saying you can't be cursed, but, you know, if you are cursed, you can fix that up real quick. You know, um, it's not hard to do. You know, yeah, I love that. I love that statement, it. though, because that's what First I know. First of all, if you believe in a higher power, ask them to handle it for you, and then do something about it yourself. It depends on your belief system as to what that's going yeah. to be. You know, is it going to be Florida water? Is it going to be mirrors? Is it going to be iron? Is it going to be a sachet hung over your door? Is it going to be a broomstick? Sure. Is it going to be a witch's bottle? What is it going to be? It doesn't matter. It will do the trick if you just put a little bit of energy into it and have a little bit of connection with that holy place in yourself. And then get yourself right. Make sure it's not you. Take a bath. <laughs> Why do I have to throw Deepak Chopra under the bus? Somebody, well, a very particular somebody said this. You know exactly why. I don't know what that means. It's Patrick. <laughs> like, what? I'll tell you later. Oh. Um, <laughs> no, you know exactly. Patrick, he knows I don't what know he what did. Mean. He knows what he did. He knows what he did. He knows what but he anyway, did. But uh, anyway, we do have a couple questions that I, when I went on that little rant, and it was not a buzz, thank you. I have a Diet Coke. Like, um, Where's your wine? It's taking a break. Blessed be. I've got to get the wine now. He does this to me on purpose. <laughs> Put down the Diet Coke and get back the booze. Patrick should get initiated just <laughs> so he can have fun in his life. Just oh wow! I'm not supposed to actually suggest such things. Mm -mm. Uh, but anyway, we don't proselytize. Uh, um, no, that's bad. A couple of bad. people said some things. And I always um, follow the rules. No, never. You don't at all. You're. <laughs> what's happening? I am very strict. Actually, you are. Yes. You are. Um, somebody in here said it's more of a metaphysics than a science. Yes, that is where you win these conversations. Let me. Mm. Here's the thing. I'll tell you. It's a little, not to get too long-winded here. When I left the church, I was a very, I, I had a very small period of my life, it was small, where I became a sort of rabid non-believer. I was in that crowd. I met Christopher Hitchens. I book signed by him. I was very much in that sort of atheistic, angry, magic is bullshit, religion is awful kind of crowd for a very short period. Um, 
if you watch debates between people like that and believers, whether it's in magic or religion, the believer fails every time because they automatically are assuming the other side is true because like this commenter said, they're, they're basically saying, yes, you're right, but I'm the exception. Please. No. Actually, there's actually a very good correlation here. Tell me. I'm not initiated and I don't need to be initiated. Please accept me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I demand to be accepted. Uh, it's, but yeah, without you're anything. asking, well, you're going to, you know, well-educated people and you're asking them for your approval. Now, where I'd like to qualify this is there are witchcraft traditions and witchcraft approaches to the scientific method that they're not actually talking about real science. They're talking about metaphysical science and they're looking at the mechanics. Of, so they like to explain the mechanics of spell work or the mechanics yeah. of how things work and try to like approach things like you know going into meditation and talk about alpha state and the different brain waves that we are, that are actually measurable. You know that's actually is true. You know that there's lots of many studies about how when you're in ritual or you're having euphoric states or whatever, it's been measured that your brain waves sort of change. You know, sure. Um, there are aspects of what we do that are you know, have had some sort of scientific backing. Uh, not a lot, obviously. Uh, you're not going to find... A, first of all, if you found a scientist who said, oh, I do believe if you mentally project something, it could actually manifest in reality, they wouldn't be a scientist anymore. And they, the, the, the academy would reject them, yes. period. So no they exceptions. can't say that, even if they believed it was true. No, and the academy would absolutely so it's much them. like the Christian... Anthropologists in the 1930s had to be like, Margaret Murray's a huge quack. Now, we get her work was very flawed, but a lot of anthropologists were, in the 1930s were very flawed. There are a renowned anthropologists who believe this, that the Druids built Stonehenge. You don't hear them still currently being ridiculed. Most anthropology in the 1930s has been erased. Mm -hmm. Not just hers. It almost all has. Because there's you know, been that's not true. more yeah. discoveries and there's more science behind it. And same thing, we could talk about scientists, we could talk about medicine, we could talk about doctors. If you look at what was our, you know, what was our knowledge of things in the 1930s, it wouldn't just be Margaret Murray. It would be lots of doctors, lots of scientists, lots of anthropologists. Yeah. Lots of, they've all their theories have been wiped away because that's what they were working with at the time. The difference is we're still talking about hers because she was anti-Christian establishment and a woman. That's where I get defensive of it. No, I think I think there's validity yeah. to that, and I think there's been Off some the rehabilitation. Yeah. But no, to bring it to bring it to some of the questions that are on here, a couple of things that have come up. Um, there's one question on here I really want you to answer because I think. What is that? That's it. Well, there was something. Mm -hmm. He's hiding things from me now. No, I I've got one question down there. Like this, right here. Is yeah, this? there's one I want to ask you. That's the one I want to oh, ask you. All right. But I missed a couple before that one. Um, like one person asking, what do you feel about cursing a fellow coven member if you feel they wronged you? I'm the high priest. Why would I have to curse them? Okay, well, we just took care of that. What does that even mean? Yes. Uh, no, you, you, uh, we don't work on each other unless that member has gone so against the grain that it's deemed necessary by the leaders of that coven. That's extremely extremely rare that that would be necessary. Yeah. Um, but it has happened, and it can happen, and there are justifications for it, but it's extremely rare. It is a very internal affair. You'd never hear about it. Um, but no, I am the high priest, and just like there's a high priestess of every coven, uh, the leaders of the coven, they have lots at their disposal. They wouldn't have to resort to cursing them. They have their own. I see that. I see what you mean. Yeah. Um, Okay, so another question that I and really like. One more thing I want to qualify, yeah, sorry. What reason would you have to do so? I think that's an important Yeah, and what say. kind of coven are you in? Uh, right. What reason would you have to do so? Um, very seldom. You know, now with the craft, we say you're free to come and go as your conscience dictates. Mm -hmm. So if somebody left or something like that, you know, it's not going to be like that, the craft where they're going to be like, you know, you tried to leave, we're going to stalk you now. That sort of thing. Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're going to be like, bye, good luck. Uh, However, well, my little pretty, I can cause accidents too. I'm kidding, we're not gonna. <laughs> Anywho, uh, however, if somebody betrayed the craft, if they oath broke, like if they started, let's say that 
they took the secrets and they started giving them to non-initiates. Or, or they, they wore like pleated they, pants. They went rogue or wore or camouflage too much. You know, whatever it is. You know, then perhaps. Then perhaps. I wore, I wore a camouflage shirt once. You were very proud of it. I wasn't. Do you <laughs> lying because Patrick's watching and he knows camouflage is wrong. Wow. I, I, I'm just guessing he does. I've seen how he dresses. I don't know what to do which, with any know, of you this. You should probably talk to him about that. I don't but know anyway. what to do <laughs> right now with my life. Anyway, anyway, we do have one question. I love this question from, um, from this person that I think you would answer well. How do you feel about initiates that very rarely, if ever, perform magic or practice spells, even if their life could do with it? They're not Alexandrians. Yeah, what a, I like this question, though. Because I Actually, do know initiates like this. that was a like question this. I had for you. Uh, I don't know any initiates like that. Uh, um, you might. Don't know who they are. But uh, I have known people who claim to be... I don't know initiates of Gardner and Alexandria. Sure, there we go. Uh, so I don't know any initiates. Uh, but uh, I do know people in witchcraft traditions, or there's a big thing, you know, you can be wicked. And I don't know what the voice is. Magic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you essentially, if you don't work magic for any reason, you're not a witch. Period. You're not practicing witchcraft. I mean, you're not yeah. the verb of witchcraft. You're not. You're not doing it. It'd be like saying, "I'm a priest, but I don't pray." Yeah, it's like, what does that even mean? Spells and magic are our way of praying. Now, we have ways of working magic that aren't always about the selfish or making the wish foundation, but we're always working magic. We're always casting spells. They just not, might not be the spells you're talking about. You know, yeah. uh, I don't think that you can be a witch and not work magic. I think working magic is essential to it. It's a, a constant thing. It comes up constantly. But it's not always slapping a root on the altar and lighting a candle. You know, uh, everything we do in ritual, everything we do in consciousness, everything we do is an act of magic. Agreed. And to go back just a little, um, people, I think, misinterpreted me just a slight when I was going on that rant about the academy. I'm not anti-academic. I'm actually the opposite. I'm a little bit bookish. No, he is. Um, He's very Pollyannic. Yeah, I'm just not into scientific materialism as a, as a philosophy. Like, I think it's dead in the water. I don't believe in it. Um, I think it's a toxic, enlightenment-based garbage philosophy. So, yeah, it's a, sorry. I'm not a modernist. I'm not going to compete with that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a modernist. <laughs> like, I'm just not. I'm sorry. I'm not going to compete with um, what he just said. Somebody um, else on here says, um, "How do you?" F- this is a great question about magic. How do you feel about the efficacy or potency of magic or spells or rituals done at, like, an altar or a sacred space versus if you're just doing it in the, in the mind's eye without access to any tools or space? I think that generally speaking, the more and please add on to this. Yeah. I'm not trying to, uh, you've been very good about directing because <laughs> I'll just answer everything. Doesn't he? Uh, I'm not used to having a partner unless they're very very pushy. So uh, <laughs> these things must be done delicately. <laughs> um, I definitely think that uh, the more effort you put into something, you know, if you take hours to plan to make a cake you study a recipe and you've got all your ingredients lined out and you're, you know, whether you're talented or not, if you spend all this time doing it, uh, it's probably going to turn out to be a better cake than if you just slapped it together. However, making magic is not necessarily a cake. So there are times when because of motivation, an experience you're having, need, circumstance, emotion, the psychic force conjured through other okay. elements. Um, I can think of a few times that I, I had moments where, I, you know, it was just a thought, but it was in a situation to where I needed that to occur very mm-hmm. strongly. So it just happened. There was no ritual or whatever. But if you've got the time to plan it and you've got the time to do it out, I think if we could all walk around twinkling our nose like Samantha Stevens 24-7, I don't know what this world would be like. It would be like a... Harry Potter witch war, wouldn't it? Because we'd all be like, you, and you, this is, this is what I want, this is what I want. Again, in a the sense, people that with actually the pleated pants and the is cross. what's happening on some level. Uh, you're in a world where you're competing for the food. Yeah. You know, the animals in the forest are all competing for who's top of the food chain, who's going to get eaten, who's going to survive. We're, we are doing that, and magic is no different. However, uh, I think to answer the question, I think preparation planning and knowledge is of course always advantage you know an advantage but there are times when sometimes you just like 
do it. Yeah, agreed. And it happens because all those things, not, the right things fall into place. But I find that's usually instinctual. It's not something, you can't just decide, I'm going to do this naturally. That's, that's just no, so. It would be natural, you it's artificial. It's an it's instinctual creative. thing. You're in danger yeah. or you need something right now. And all the psychic, your psychic force goes out and it does what it needs to do. And who's got to complain about instant gratification? Nobody. Um, I'd add on in this way. I think it goes, it's all about what you said earlier, which is it's about effort. Like, um, you know, we all say these things. Like, we, we're all so, f- you know, I'm going to be Blessed vulgar. Be. I, gotta, oh, I am like tipsy, and I'm not usually tipsy this early, so you've got wow. to catch up. I'm fine. Um, of course he is. He's drinking a freaking Diet Coke. I did, in between. Very gautineerian, by no, the way. Why do you... <laughs> anyway. <coughs> so I had a point. I forget what it is now. Totally. Um, oh, effort, right? Do we not have a video caller? So here's Would you like your one car reading? Hi. Welcome. Dial 1-800- Roll into Cane. Exactly. <laughs> I, it's our late night. Welcome. Roll into Cane. Roll into Cane. <laughs> that's amazing. None of that's correct. <laughs> I made that. Oh, God. What is that, that line from that Mad, what is that mad yeah. TV psychic line that I love so much? Look to the stars, honey, because you ain't never going to be one. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, or lives are like Starbucks. There's another one right around in the corner. Um, no, I had a point. The, uh, the whole altar thing sacred space, work you put into things or whatever. Um, we all are full of shit in the real world. Everything that people say, 99% of the time, is full of shit. I have Who do you mean by we? All of us, the world, humanity. What are you talking about? Well, we're not mortal, so it's different. Um, Still don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I'm saying, for example, I have a ton of clients who come to me, and they say things like, I need a relationship. I don't care what he does. I don't care if he makes money. I care if he's kind to me. Liar. Nobody means that. I mean, you need <laughs> kindness, yes, but people want other what things. What if he's a homeless man off the street it's and like, he's what if really he's cruel? Nice. You know I mean? Like, you know, what if he's kind in some ways but cruel in others? Like, so what I'm saying is this effort matters. If somebody's trying to woo you and they put no effort into their life whatsoever, you really going to love them? Do you really care about them? Like, you think you might. Well, so it depends. Are we the, talking about a harem or... No, Deborah. We're talking... <laughs> no. It's getting a little weird. I don't know. But no, that's my analogy to that. It's like, effort matters, whether it's love, magic, sex, money, life, work. It doesn't matter. So, like, effort is huge. So, if you put no effort into something, don't expect much out of it. I, I mean, that's agree with that. pretty basic, yeah. right? It's like, I want to lose weight. But I'm going to eat Burger I'm King every day. I'm sensitive you're going to be about this. I'm not. Uh, you're like, and you ate today. And you ate today. How dare you? <laughs> Carbs. Um, somebody wanted to know do you about dream magic, if you do anything with dream magic. You know, uh, why don't you answer this question? I think I um, I've actually, done, you just answered one, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Uh, I've done a little, but I can answer it shortly. <laughs> not a lot. I don't, it's I'm not, not a particular really, uh, not consciously, uh, not consciously. There is this thing that happens to me sometimes, and it's always this, like, the in-between sleeping space. Uh, Like, if I'm trying to fall asleep, or if I'm waking up and I'm not fully asleep, I have had some very strange experiences, and I do have very magical dreams. But I, I've, I've, I've had prophetic dreams. I've had very magical dreams. I've had dreams in just like anyone else's dreams. Or dreams yeah. Right? And you're not usually always sure what to make of them because they're your mind. You know? um, so you're like, is that a real thing or is that just my mind messing with me? You know? um, yeah. Well, magic is all in the mind for us human beings. That's your greatest tool is what's going on there. The fire is in the head, you know, as they say. Um, mm-hmm. I think it probably happens to everyone, you know, but no, consciously I don't, I don't. There are times when I go to dream and I I'll program myself, like they say you do, tonight I'm going to have a dream, never works for it's me. It's just not my forte, I'm not uh, saying it's not real or that it's not amazing, it's not my thing. It happens. You yeah, know? and, and for I'm some like strange reason, I will tell you this thing, the weirdest dreams I ever have, like the most magical dreams I ever have, are like always associated with thunderstorms. Okay. I don't know why. I don't have an answer for that. I've got no enlightened wisdom. Mine are associated with Deborah Messer. It's always like God is kind of involved, I suppose you could say. Um, And I'll wake up and there will be a thunderstorm going on. Yeah. Is it psychological because I'm hearing the thunderstorm? I don't know. Could be. Here's an interesting one that I want to answer. Static electricity. Or start with and feel free to add on. Do you think spell science? 
Uh huh. Do you think that a spell curse or prayer will have better outcome when um, more people are focusing their energy on it? Yes, I do. And here's my example, and it's very simple. High school. Um, get a group of mean girls together and let them start spreading a rumor and just des- decide they're going to destroy one girl's reputation by sheer will alone, and they will achieve it, right? I, um, you know, I happen to interact a lot with this age group in my uh, mundane career, and I can promise, promise you it is a thing, like, like a g- group think where t- so many people will focus and they'll, they'll target it towards one person. Mm-hmm. It is unbelievably efficacious. Right. This is it's true. Thing. It's called pack mentality, mob mentality. Uh, and it's I'll like give you all a little trick, though, if you ever become a victim of it. Become the pharaoh and take those thoughts as prayers. They're all focusing on you. Yep. You know, so you actually are the centerpiece. You can let it destroy you, or you can realize all their energy is coming at you, and it's yours to do with what you will. Uh, I learned that analogy from Christian, actually. The, the pharaoh's magic. Yeah. Uh, preparing me for public life. Yeah, it's know. the name, right? Which has never happened to me, really. Not on the surface. You know, I think it has behind the scenes. But I've never really... When I first came out after my initiation because of some unfortunate false information I was given as a brand new initiate, I was sort of attacked at that time. You know, I, I was given many lineages and one of them turned out to not be legitimate. Well, I was like the brand new initiate. So I was like, Levi just gave me the Knight of Cups. Levi just gave me the Truce card with the Hell's Hat. Uh, Levi just gave me the Success card. I forget these are weird named cards, aren't they? Which is actually... Well, look the at the top, it'll tell you. So like six of Swords. Six of Pinnacles. Pinnacles. I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, I don't know this deck very well. But anyway, Levi gave me all these things, right? Levi just gave them to me, Gardnerian people. And one of them was Alexander, and the Alexandrians were like, welcome. Year passed, and I had two Gardnerian ones. And one was a California Gardnerian, and they've got a civil war going on about that. So that was a thing on the other. And the other one was, unfortunately, I guess a fake lineage. But it wasn't one that I, you know, knew anything about. Yeah. So... I got attacked relentlessly about it, like I had invented it. Like I didn't initiate myself. You yeah. know, I didn't. I didn't. But it's all you your know. fault. Yes, but it was all my fault, and I became the attack. And that's when Christian first said, "You know, they're all thinking about you. Take it in. What do you want to do with this initiation? What do you want to do with with this situation?" And in the end, I said, "I think I want to fucking be Alexandrian because these Gardnerians are being dicks." You know, uh, do you know what she did? <laughs> Your canting daughter. Do you uh, know yeah. what? Uh, their persecution of me was probably coming from their own agenda. These Gardnerians, obviously, since then, I've made great friends. This is a, not to interrupt you, uh, I love what this person said about your situation. Laura said, another way to look at it is just think about this. If you get stabbed in the back, you're the one with the knife now. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's so good. I love that. I well, anyway, the, the moral of the story, to not to take too much time to talk time, is I did do that. I eventually, I said, you know what? All eyes are on me. That's I'm a great going quote. to perform I'm steal a show. That. You know, if I'm on stage... Me dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, it's fine. Um, so, somebody asked a, a very simple question that I like. Uh, do you ever use tarot cards in magical workings? Yes. Same. Yeah. I use them as, like, um, particularly as ways to focus, like, on a specific archetype or energy or a speci- I hate that word, energy. It's so overused. A specific sort of um, goal, right? An image that really resonates with me powerfully. I'm not going to tell you how. Yeah. That's that, like I told them a lot. Um, <laughs> it's tarot cards. So, actually, I am going to tell you how it's going to be in my book, but I'm not going to tell you now. <laughs> nice. Uh, another one that I wanted to I wanted to ask because it hasn't come up yet is um, what the ethics of cursing. Like, what do you feel about the fact that some people are like never cursing? Some people lately seem to be it's all they do. Like, on I think social media, it's the only magic. I they think do. they're both idiots. I love cursing. Well, explain, because you. Well, what is the curse? There you go, because you know there's like a. Um, hidden meaning. A curse is throwing an obstacle to someone <clears throat> or binding someone or bind you, Nancy. it's not necessarily trying to cause Take harm. Over. You know, um, a spell is 
working a work, right? A curse falls under that. A curse is basically where you're trying to tax someone in some way. It doesn't necessarily... T- curses are not necessarily evil. I actually find it very strange, bizarre, disturbing, and upsetting that when most people are talking about curses, they're talking about killing people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. you know, sometimes separating relationships or making someone lose their job. Uh, yeah. You know, I might do something playful, like make someone's hair fall out. It happened to me. It's not actually harmful. You didn't have hair on that, <coughs> did you? I did. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. I'm joking. You're awful at this thing. <laughs> Just You're setting yourself up tonight. I know. Um, no, I've never made anyone's hair fall out that I know of, because I can remember consciously. <laughs> consciously. What? Consciousness. Um... My point is, is that actually cursing could be as simple as, let's think about the fairy tales. God, this thing's burning my ear. Um, fairy tales were often, you know, let's think of Beauty and the Beast. It was this prince who was a jerk, and he was mean to people, and, this, and he was mean to this spiritual entity, fairy, witch, whatever the hell she was. Yeah. And she, she basically was like, you're a cruel, horrible Traveling back person. saleswoman. So I'm going to curse you that you are going to look like how you actually are until you find true love. Well, in the end, her curse was actually a blessing because he did find the true love. He became beautiful and he lived happily ever after. I mean, that's the, you know, through a lot of torment. So sometimes a curse is, you know, uh, oh, I guess it goes back to, you know, when you throw obstacles towards people, you're trying to sometimes get them to overcome things. Yeah. So in that way, I do curse my students. Sure. Because I will sometimes be like, you need to overcome this. Sure. And I will, you know, I will send them on, you know, maybe sometimes you think you've got a fat and a shit and you say something to them to get them to overcome it. That's a curse, isn't it? You are it? hateful. I didn't do that. You are hateful. Uh, I didn't do that. Uh, but this anyway. Is, this, is my, and this, is my, <laughs> this is my teacher right here. Use thy voice, Sarah. Fill the sky. Bring the little brats to die. No. Well, anyway, the point of it is, is well, I don't know if the question was anymore. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, here's the thing, though. I agree with the clever wordplay. I do. And I agree with what you're saying here. But I will say this. On the more literal cursing thing, it is a huge trend right now on social media that it's all people talk None about. None of them are doing it. No, right. and it's gross. If you're on social media talking about it, you wouldn't talk about it, you wouldn't you talk about it constantly. Right. And I'm not afraid of you. Here, if I had hair, you could take it. You want a fingernail? Take it. You think I'm afraid of you? Like also, how Here's much? the whole team. Like I have faith the in my God. End of the day, I'm fine. If you are right with yourself and you're right with the higher power, the only thing that's going to destroy you is you, not anyone else. Exactly. Uh, what is it? I'm, I really uh, don't care for Buddhist philosophy at all. Just personally, it's not. No, it's your complete. But there's a fantastic quote he has where he says, "Being Asshole angry like our president." Well, well sure, but he oh, says okay. the Buddha says in the can- mm-hmm. Pali Canon. Being angry at someone and directing all your violence towards them constantly so that it consumes you is like grabbing onto a hot coal with the expectation of burning another person. There was a... Good luck. Another phrase. Right? Yeah, no, exactly. You're Same just going to burn you. yourself. Uh, if you're swimming in a pool and you piss in it, you're... You're in, in the piss, too. In the piss, too. Yeah. And, I mean, maybe you're into that. Maybe, you know, you know no judgment there. Levi, you don't have to tell us everything. Wow. Wow. No, not my thing. My name is Patrick. Swear to God. Patrick. Nope, we're not doing that. <laughs> nope, shut it down. <laughs> Shut it down. Let's go. Be careful. You don't end up like Nancy. You've already done that one. I know. (laughs) How quaint. Even the rabble. (laughs) I like this person said, I have like 167 guides. Try me, bro. Like, actually, I kind of agree with that. I'm like, yeah, I'm like totally friends with God. So, you know, 167 is a lot to keep up with. I'm not your teacher. Kidding. No, I like it, though. Like, I love that attitude. No, I great love that attitude because that's my attitude. I'm always like, yeah, I'm I'm best friends with God. She's got my back. So do your worst. What are you going to do? I don't need much. Also, you have no idea. I actually, and I tell my students this all the time, and he can actually tell you that I do. I'm like, we don't need much. You know, we've got. We've got our god and our goddess and the quarter lords we work with, the mighty ones. And also the, the whole thing is like, be so, be so happy and confident in yourself that that shit just is never going to touch you. That is a huge part it's of it. It's not going to. Uh, you are your worst enemy. You, know, you weren't put on this earth to, you know, you do have to survive. Like we are in a jungle. You know? And if you decide you're going to work in the world of witchcraft and uh, magic, you are ringing the dinner bell. You are. 
So yeah. not to make the paranoid more paranoid, because if you're paranoid... God knows they don't need it. probably not actually doing any of this. You're probably a weird worshipper following the real magic people around going, please make my man love me again. Please make me not curse. You know, there are these sycophantic Take away the creatures yeah. that will latch on to other magical creatures. And they're like, they'll become obsessed with them. You know, what are they doing now? What's happening? You well, know, they're guru chasers. Uh, it's yeah. like Levi towards me. You know, just... That's <laughs> Please. Uh, <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. Definitely not. I'm joking. <laughs> but good was funny, right? It was. Uh, well done. The, the point of it is, though, is that you'll get these people who are, are sort of like... They're so latched on to magical people that they sense the magic. It's like a insect to a light. You will deal with it someday. No, you deal with it as a reader all the time. Oh, of course. Oh. What do I mean someday? But when you become, but you become a high priest, you're going to have people wanting to. They want work. Yeah. Gravitate to you, not just for that, but for training. <laughs> do not respond to this. I'll kill you. Um, uh, all joking aside, I, I, no one's being called out. No. Except Levi. I know, it's always me. Um, I must torture those I love, just so everyone knows. Wow. Uh, this, um, I'm a cat that way. I'm a dog person. But and I'm a cat soul. I'm, <laughs> a cat soul. I'm just a bird. I talk I'm to like, damn much. You're sitting there. Sorry. Um, here's the other thing I'll say about cursing. It just honestly, I'm sorry, but I just don't, I do not get this obsession right now of it, that you have to remind me. Like anytime somebody figures out what my religion is, or if I tell them, because I'm very open about it. Um, there are secret initiates are wonderful. I don't happen to be one. I'm very public. Very happy to be an unsecret. I love witch. secret initiates. Me too, but I happen to be open. Wish my husband was still one. Shade. <laughs> Shade. <laughs> I know. I knew we would hear the peanut gallery on that one. Be like, how dare you? I wasn't sure if he was gonna catch it. Oh, Just God. teasing. I'm being um, very naughty. Like. You are, but yeah. I love it. No, I um, I had a point. What was it? Was it important? Probably not. <laughs> You're looking. That's much too vulgar display of power, Karis. <laughs> God. Do we have any questions? I've cursing got more though. for you. Let me ask you a question. Cursing, damn it! I had a point. What the hell's cursing even mean? Uh, it just seems like everybody's obsessed to remind me when they find out what my religion is. Well, I don't follow the Wiccan read. It's like, nobody cares, Becky. If, if your whole goal in life is to go out and be mean all the damn time and to hurt people, do you want nobody to likes share you anyway. a successful spell with us that you feel comfortable sharing with us? Um, yes. I don't care to share some success stories. I don't ever talk about work that I'm doing while it's going on, ever. Um, I just That's a personal thing. I don't do it. I don't post on Facebook. It's not exactly or media. just personal. Well, it's training, right? You know, I was trained to do so. You know, work is... Not that mm, I expect credit. Of course not. You're so um, so generous. He might have come that way. I don't um, really know. No, um, I'm very <laughs> private about work. I'm very open about other things. But you can. Uh, I won't shut up about religion and life. Like big shocker, it's all I freaking talk about. Like I am literally like just insanely annoying sometimes in public when it comes to the topic of religion. But when it comes to magic, never shut mouth. Like I don't talk about my works, but I can talk about a few that were successful. Um, I finished my master's and did really well in my career and sort of like went up in that because of like a very concentrated effort that I did work-wise. Mm -hmm. um, it was very successful and I was very happy about it. Um, certain things have happened in my private life in terms of like finances and like um, homes and whatnot that were very directly related to work. killed his ex-husband. I was never married. <laughs> He's lying. He's lying. Maybe Just, he is. You know, uh, first of all, if very wealthy. It, please, do you know how much, if, <laughs> if all I had to do was murder somebody to be rich, they'd be dead. <laughs> Like, they'd be dead, Deborah. Like, like, they would be, like, okay, I wouldn't have to keep doing this job anymore. You understand? Like, yeah, quiet. No, no, right? Shh, we're ruining his plans. We don't, we don't want now anybody to know. Now everyone knows. Um, Guess we're going to have to stay married, Christian. I'll get implicated. Oh, God. Mm. I already own half of everything. Wow. <laughs> Kill him to get rich. I already am. Well, you already am. Mm, you already are, I mean. Wow, okay. Yeah. So... I'm also aggressively white. Look at those shoulders. <laughs> I, was about, I was about to say, what is this? That's yeah, actually yeah. not white latex. This is actually my skin. skin. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't <laughs> exist in nature. Like well, when you haven't been out of the your house nature. in the sunlight in there a good four lots years. Lots of, of nature. There are lots of, well, because well, sunlight's not your friend anymore. Um, I mean, vitamin D is a thing, Brian. We keep going. Off. We've been drinking. We keep going off of tangents because I was in the middle and I don't even remember what I right. was talking Are about. Any other questions there? Um, I skipped a few. Um, Why don't we ever get any video callers? Are you all ashamed of what you look like? What? 
We want to see your sexy faces on here. We want to make you famous. What, what is wrong with you? Lots of things. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. Um, I can call people out, but I can't now. Uh, what's going on? Who is holding money out on me? Please. Like Who I would be. It? Are you kidding? Like, what? Uh, not yet. <laughs> I mean, hey, we all not have yet. plans. We all things happen. have plans. Okay, so here's somebody. Somebody says, I wonder if the rise in cursing is prompted uh, on social media. Whoops, it's going too fast. Cross, I think um, it comes... Can I say which I think it comes from? Yeah. In the Dark Ages, the reason why we've got all this propaganda towards witchcraft, I think we're generally taught it was hysteria or was the church trying to stamp out pagan cults, but it was also a very miserable time. You know, people were not living good lives and there was a lot of negative energy and hatred and people probably liked the idea of asking the devil to kill someone for them. I don't doubt for a second that there were tons of people going into the woods going, Satan, kill my neighbor. You know, don't talk about me right now. We're getting it later. (laughs) Uh, I mean, I'm not saying I I believe that to be true for any sort of like proof, but imagining how human beings are and how uneducated human beings are and how... There's sort of this like learning curve between Christianity and paganism as well. Like I think there's a lot to this. So I think we're kind of in a miserable place in America where a lot of people feel disenfranchised, they feel disempowered, and being able to harm someone with a thought makes them feel powerful. That's perfectly you know? right. and that's it's the truth. Sad Violence, right? that that's what they need to make them feel powerful, but in reality, that's what's going on. And that, that's what I believe. I agree with you. They want the violence so, because it makes them feel like they've reclaimed something. You know, and they can do that and get away with it. You know, uh, it's not going to work, obviously. But uh, what I always say, as far as my ethics, as far as that's concerned, is um, I would do a death spell under the right circumstances. I've never had that correct circumstance occur. Um, but if it, you know, if if Hitler was uh, leading my country. And I became very aware that he was Hitler. Um, Yeah, I probably would do my best to project for him to die or be overthrown or whatever. I just don't think magic Um, works this way. But that's a whole... You don't think what? Like, I think it's a whole nother, like, um, (laughs) it's a whole nother um, topic. Uh, You have no idea. I know, like when you said watch out. Uh, Here's what I'm going to say. And you know who you are. Why would you kill the goose that laid the golden egg? Uh, uh, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not. No, a, you keep that goose alive. Have another cherry. <laughs> have another cherry, darling. Um, no, I have a. I'm not going to do this because I promised myself I wouldn't. Just do it. No, I have a whole big thing. Satan wants you to do No, I mean, don't bring up daddy. It's in the middle of something. You obviously want you to. And the devil wants you to do it, so I have to. If, by the way, if you didn't finish Sabrina, we're going to talk about it on the astral later. Um, world. Um, no, I have a whole belief about what magic really is that is very different than I think a lot of people that I know in the magical community. I don't, I don't use words like energy a lot, and I'm directing my energy to accomplish blah, blah. I, it's just not my lingo. It's not my world. I think magic is very thurgic. It's very divine. I think it's a psychological act. I'm not into this literal belief these people on Facebook have of, if I light the candle that's the right color, this magic energy zaps through the atoms and changes something. That's just superstition, children. Like, I mean, I'm in a mystery cult. What I'm a priest. What do you believe in? What do I believe in? The innate... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what I believe in. <laughs> Hail... Th- no, I won't do it. You, you did. Um, no. All joking aside, though, I don't believe in this whole, like, I'm channeling this... The, the, they almost describe it as some sort of... There are lots of pseudoscientific nonsense. But I they, love those. Those are just... That's just a formula that somebody put together at some point in time. It's thergic, it's power, it's focus, energy. But, you know, it's like Personal energy, not energy as in like this thing that zaps around in the world. Well, there's an that actual sign to it in the sense that it's like, you know, if enough people thought green was Venus, then it's sort of... Well, of I believe theory, in that, the it? sort of egregore uh, concept, yeah. But at the same time, it's just kind of like, that's not what makes magic work. And we're not going to tell you what does. If you want to really know how we work magic, you're going to have to get initiated. And that's a real cunty thing to say. But the Do reality- you know what she did? <laughs> Your canting daughter. You set it up. I mean, you said the C word. Yes, I did. 
Uh, we're not actually supposed to swear, and I've been very bad on this episode with doing that. But the reality, like all we're of them, trying, really. Our goal was to be drunk and classy. <laughs> <laughs> My God. A, can we get you a t-shirt that says this that? Is I'm Brian and I'm drunk and drunk classy. And classy. Like, Wine, how classy. He's one of those things. Uh, um, well, it's more fun, first of all. My favorite initiative. There was a, an initiate, I'm not going to say her name because we were really, She used to do YouTube videos and she'd drink wine and do the most fabulous YouTube videos and everyone loved her. I don't know what happened. Maybe she quit drinking. I don't know. But I love how you said that. So like, oh God, she quit uh, drinking. Not I don't like, know. Good she for her. She became very like frumpy and boring. You know, it's like, it's not her fault. Oh, God. You know, I don't know what's going on in her life. It's not my problem. Wow. She was God knowing. I don't know what to do anymore <laughs> with this. No. Okay, we are nearing. I'll you. never let you God be God to know because um, we've got 30 minutes to go technically on the show. So if anyone wants to call in, you know, uh, if anyone wants to call in, now would be the time. Yeah. Um. Somebody just said I'm drunk and okay. Good I'm for you. I'm drunk and white. Good well, for you. you know? Shit. Like, <laughs> nice to have hobbies. Do you know I'm actually part Egyptian? I think that's where the that's Asian not, flesh. None of it that. is true. No. Yes, Brian. it is. That's not how genetics works. <laughs> I'm part Egyptian. Um, no, no. Stop, Levi. <laughs> He's mad about it. He gets legitimately <laughs> mad when I'm like, you're not first African. All, <laughs> like, I, well, first of all, we all come from Africa. Well, yes, but if you're that far back, we're so related that it doesn't even matter anymore. It might be pre-Egyptian, but it's the same area. Okay. So whatever. A real, okay. <sighs> My gods were probably the gods that made the Egyptian gods, so you just back off, Appalachian boy. Appalachian. First, first of all, all, I'm probably just, you know, I could just claim reincarnation. That's what everybody does now, right? I was, uh, I've just got some past life things the guy going that on. Killed mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm amazing. sorry, but your undiagnosed like issues are not past life issues. Okay, they're issues that you're not taking responsibility for. That's a whole chest that should not have opened. Okay, it's not opening. Somebody asked a question: Do you believe deity sends you help when you are working magic? An animal yes. or outside? Wait, what? Oh, well, I didn't hear the whole question. Yeah, well, it went a little different than I thought it would be. Well, read the whole thing. So, for example, do you believe so deity can help you, or also they're asking if an animal or a pet, for example, could Where help you? Where is it? Hold on. Do you believe deity sends you help when you are working magic? An animal, if outside, or a pet being very persistent. Being, are you talking about a familiar, like a deity? Familiar? Maybe they are. Start with the deity uh, one, and we'll see if they answer. Well, I think a deity can help you. That's we believe in that. Co you know, we don't think we don't pray to our gods in that sort of Christian way. You know, we connect with them, and you know, because we are a priesthood, but we're a magical priesthood. So the way that we're trained is not like a conventional priest where you go in and you light incense and you bow down. We do do these things, but you know, you bow down and you. That's all it is. You know, we're not just trying to supplicate our gods we have in that working we actually you know encourage ourselves to go stand with them i suppose you could say so yeah. uh, as far as like familiar spirits I, I don't that's a completely different topic so i don't i don't know what you yeah that's gonna that's that. a whole thing do you think the gods can show themselves through signs and omens through animals or whatever yeah they can um like i always say to anyone practicing magic these little, like, symbols you're given. If I had a raven come circle me nine times. A raven. And I thought that was miraculous. And I didn't have a witness. What's the point of me telling the story? It's your story. You have to have a witness for it to be something that should be communal. If it's a private experience, if it's internal... It's not something meant to be communal by God, goddess, spirit, whatever. It's just not meant to be communal. Yeah. If they meant it to be communal, you'd have a witness. You know, Christians do that. Give me a witness. You know, uh, when miracles are performed, there's a witness if, it, if it's meant to be communal. So experiences that are solitary, are they should keep them to yourself. Yeah. Because bragging to them about other people is... What do you trying to gain there. Yeah, it's not a revelation that's meant for everyone. I yeah, get that. And, and even if you're right, you know, maybe you're absolutely right. Maybe Zeus came down and had sex with you in your room. 
and you're pregnant with this baby. Maybe that's... That happened to a lot of people Maybe in that's still happening. People are to but if believed. you start telling people that, chances of them believing you or benefiting from it are probably very slim. They're slim now. They used to be a really good chance people would believe it. Shit, could help you start an empire. It happened for a few people. Just saying. Um, so another thing that somebody brought up was... Let me go back and find it. We've had a few since then. Also, somebody says, yes, you are so Egyptian. Disagree. I... Um, now you, okay, I'm going to tell him off right now. Does everyone mind if I tell Levi off? Because I'm kidding. I'm going to tell him off anyway. Good, do it. Um, you poo-poo on my Egyptian DNA. Well, is it only a little? Right. But it is there. You poo-poo on, first of all, you can't poo-poo on my British thing. That comes from so many sources. My family was actually Mormon. Yes. And Lots of so those running around in Egypt. I actually have... <laughs> <laughs> well, according to Joseph Smith, probably. Probably, right. But, uh, Tons of Mormons. I'm not, Egypt. you know, I'm aggressively British. I'm aggressively white. And I've got a lot of Viking in me, which is, which is why I'm very tall. I'm mostly actually British, mostly DNA. In fact, we were talking about Ancestry.com when it changed. I just became more British. Same. When they redid the updates, yeah. mine's just like, you're all from England, uh, you white but person. Like. I actually did more than one DNA site. Yeah, me too. So I got to... In your African migration, most of my African descendants came from Northeast Africa and the Red Sea, which technically is pre-Egypt, probably. I mean, yeah. that's a pretty old place, so we don't really, we don't really quite truly know. But I love the fact that that my, some of my ancestors actually were there because that's a huge spiritual place for me. Technically speaking, my ancestral faith would be British, but my yeah. faith is not based merely on my DNA. bones and dirt. I'm super glad that we are not a religion that does that, by the way. So my two spiritual homelands are actually Britain and Alexandria, Egypt. But that's what I've chosen it to be. Yeah. It's not for... I would, I'm not really into reason. the whole... Um, and I know it's very popular right now in certain communities, but I'm not a particular fan of the gods of your blood, you know, the gods of your people. Like, I think that there's, there's a place for that, and it's very important. For example, in... How many of you don't like, like your mother and father, your aunt, your uncle, your grandpa, or grandpa? How many of you are related to people who are horrible people? Horrible people, yeah. You know, it's, it's not necessarily the thing to be um, claimed. However, you know, as initiates, we also go on the, you know, the initiatory lineage. Exactly, we're initiates. We're here for so a spiritual it's initiation. it's more than one thing. I do honor my ancestors, but only on a certain level. I only honor the ones I like. Just, well, not, you know, I don't pray to them. No, and I feel no desire to worship the dead. It's a personal opinion. I know it's not popular right now. First of all, I hope circles, they've got better things to do now. Exactly. I, I die, I don't want to be sitting around waiting for fucking Levi to talk to me because he's fucking boring. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> he's not really. We'd have great conversations. I'd be like, Levi, zombies actually are real and we're powerful. Become a zombie god. What's happening? I don't know. Joking. A lot of wine um, in this one. Yes. Well, um, I love this. Somebody said my maternal grandparents yeah. were jerks. Like, I mean, exactly. So, like, here's my thing. Um, by the way, this Norse moon person keeps making the best jokes every single time we say something. Who are you? I don't are know you my new boyfriend? But they have fantastic... Or girlfriend. Like, I don't one, know. One time they were like... Whatever. When you were like, totems, Nobody they were just like, I have 24 totems. I'm not even kidding. Like, every single time they've just been perfect. I like, love your trolling. Yeah, I love these real. trolling comments so much. It's like, we don't worship our grandfathers. My grandfather was a 32 degree I have Mason. so many <laughs> statues in my house. If they were all listening, I am the Alpha and Omega. I don't, I'm not working with all of them. Many you know, ain't Levi. Many cast of that. Interesting. <laughs> Who are we talking about? Many. Many ain't Levi. Yeah, you're not, you're not many. Oh, many cast of that. You're not. not. No. Many Pearl. He's basically saying you're not worthy of standing next to me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wrong. <laughs> I'm teasing. I can't even find the I line. picked him. I handpicked him. Satan doesn't need a new supreme. It's not my run. benefit, though. That's not help you. That just Literally. basically means I should kill you. Um, um, but, uh, no, no, Levi's actually, the Dark Lord came to me and said, Levi. <laughs> the and in fact, Lord. actually, my video game handle used to be Leviathan. See, it's all a sign from God. Together. It's all coming together. He's just, actually, why? You're Leviathan. Well, no, I can't do that because that was me. I can't. Leviathan is also, um, yeah, no. <laughs> Somebody asked, um, how would one have an initiation? Um, you seek initiation. That's how you have one. You seek it. Oh. Well, do you mind if I Take it. clarify on that? I know you would. Why do you think I turned? Um, I'm like, and? 
Cindy? You have to ask for it. So you go to... You do, you do traditionally need to be in the area that they're in because it's very hard to train long distance. Some people do it, though, so I'm not... You know, if you find a coven you like, ask them. Go to the leaders and say, I want to get initiated. You have to ask for it. Everything in the craft, everything in the craft has to be asked for. Yes. Nothing is handed to you. Nothing is given. Really it has given, to be asked for. Never offered. doesn't mean we say yes, but you have to ask for it anyway. It's never offered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Something else someone said that I actually want to go back to because I agree with her. Laura said... Um, she said, for somebody who's starting out that's very new and has no direction, looking into, an in, looking into their ancestors and their ancestral homeland can be a good place to start, at least. I do agree with that, right? Like, like let's say some Celtic gods speak to you because your family grew up, you know, in Celtic land, sort of, sure. But I I'm will say... I'm going to be the devil's advocate. Don't stay... No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that but you should not stay okay. there, okay. right? Do not stay there because the minute that you do... I'm sorry, but I've just noticed, especially right now in certain traditions, I don't want to get too specific here... The whole blood and country and folk and whatnot thing is going real dark. It's not just certain traditions. You know, it's just, be careful with Here's that. Here's what I say about that. If you're doing, yeah, it's not bad. You know, if you're Scottish and you decide to look in your Scottish spirituality, or if you're, you know, uh, from West Africa and you decide to look into one of those tribes, I'm just trying to think of a tribe, I'm not very good at that. Um, there's nothing wrong with it at all. We're not saying there's anything wrong with it. If that's but but I'm gonna ask you a different question. Why would you think your blood has anything to do with your gods? That's a strange way of thinking in modern times, and it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. The last dangerous person who did it, its name was Adolf Hitler. Yeah, well, yeah, the whole Nazi cult thing, you know. It's very dangerous. What, why is that a thing? People don't become Christian because their ancestors were Christian. People don't become Buddhists because their ancestors were Buddhists. Uh, it's a that, converts is what you're talking about. Yeah, well, yeah. no, I think it should be a choice. If you, there's nothing wrong with exploring it. I do it myself. I have. I've explored all my ancestry, including my Egyptian Heritage. Uh, to but, the depths. Um, it is true. Um, I probably actually am related to Pharaoh. So yeah, sure. I love what somebody said here. Uh, when pride turns to hate, check yourself. When you get into how you're going to find God, it should be about what you actually feel inside of you as an individual. I think your past should be determined on what your ethics are what your philosophy is, what you when you're gauging it on in the past, when we were in established things, it was your parents <coughs> gave you your religion. Yes. And you accepted it. And maybe later you didn't. But in America and most Western civilizations these days, we're not choosing our religion based on our parents. So if you're not choosing your relationship with God based on your parents, why would you do it based on your ancestry? Yeah, and I want to add something. Doesn't make any sense. Super, super. Very dangerous. Important here. And weird. You're, if you want to tell me, this is something I get really heated about because I despise this. I despise this whole sort of conversation. If somebody says to me, well, I honor my gods because they were the gods of my ancestors. Let's say, I'm just going to pick. Your ancestors were probably Christians. Your ancestors for were Christians time. for over a millennia, in yeah. le- with very few exceptions. And you probably had ancestors with. We all had ancestors in plethora of So I guess screw them, right? You don't care about those ancestors yeah. who would roll over in their graves when they saw you committing pagan idolatry. Yeah. And what if your, your ancestors were German Lutherans who died for the faith against you know Catholic yeah, reformers? Like, not a thing. Please, yeah. like I guess they don't matter. So you're you're saying I'm yeah. honoring my ancestors, but yeah, not you're them. not really just the, uh, the ones uh, you know in pre eighth century Bavaria or whatever, not the ones that I actually knew. Come on, that's not ancestor worship. It's fatherland worship. Now, you it's must weird. understand that we don't practice ancestral worship, but I, I do think it's very dangerous, and the reason why I think it's very dangerous, there's nothing wrong with exploring your heritage. And saying, yeah, sure. That's my fine. family was Swedish, and my family was Scottish, so I'm going to see what they might have done as pre-Christians. Perfectly fine. We're not knocking that at all. But to actually choose your religion based on your ancestors is and actually a, specific group of ancestors. a fallacy, because we all have... And so it's just going. I'm joking with Libra, but the Egyptian because that area is actually very minute. You know, yeah. it's probably like 
two percent of my DNA. Levi does not need more wine. You know, whereas my British ancestry is like a lot. But what religion is Britain? Like, Anglican. is it Anglican. Catholic? Is it Celtic Christianity? Is it the Protestantism that came later? Is it the Druids? Is it the Picts? Is who 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 is Which that actually representing? So the idea of I think the idea of pursuing your spirituality based on your ancestors is really actually quite intellectual and dangerous. And but you have to understand that we actually practice a religion that doesn't do that. We don't do ancestor worship. We, you know, we do have you know in Britain obviously certain cultures and certain people in Britain might live certain places where they feel very attached to that idea, but in a broader sense we practice a mystery cult and so and we believe in reincarnation. Which Gerald Gardner put the stamp on that when he, you know, started his yeah. First we're coven. more like a Lucis. Uh, so then we are the state. We cult. don't necessarily believe that who you're related to matters at all. We, we have, are all individuals. I agree with you. I feel like we've went way off. Topic you could be magic. born. No, I think it's actually important. It's magical. Oh, it's super important. You could be born in a fucking. Excuse me. Why should I keep cussing tonight? You're doing great, by the way. Why, you could be born in a family of Nazis. Does that Aggressive. make you responsible for their beliefs? Does that mean you should be a Nazi? No, never. It's the actually a very never. good metaphor. It is. As you direct should, as yeah. it is. Uh, I, don't, I, I like ancestral things only for one thing. The people that came before us are a product of who we are on some level. So honoring your family, that kind of ancestor, that's that's cool. If you know who they are, your family might have been a Nazi who killed 300 Jews in a... Yeah. You know, like, who are you honoring? If you know who everyone in your family is, and, you know, but to do it just because it's a trend right now... I, no, I, don't. I have been a very strong opinion lately that I think racially oriented belief systems are very dangerous. I don't care if they're white, black, Chinese. I don't care. I think they're dangerous. But, you know, if you're going to do it, do it because you believe in it, not because somebody else did it. But I think you... I mean, I'm going to agree with him on one thing. Is like even... Because I, I have a, I have a double-edged sword kind of belief about this. On the, one so, on the one side, I think that solidarity in an oppressed group is very important sometimes to confront oppression. Yes, but that can quickly turn Get into weird. something else. It can, as it has, yeah. for example, with... The suppression, like it can happen in any religion. If you're really in a tribe, like if you're really, sure, a, sure. If you're really a like, if you're fifty percent Zulu or you're Cheyenne, yes, yeah, of course, that's different. That's different, you know. But if you're just like someone wanting to be that or identifying with that, no. And this is no. not even a white black issue, as it often is in America. It's unfortunately, not a, who makes it to white black? No, issue? I'm saying a lot of people online do when they talk oh, about this. Oh. Um, in for America, example, probably. Yeah, yeah. For example, um, Tamil Hindus and Sinhalese Buddhists in, in Sri Lanka, there's a lot of places where racially charged religion gets very, very toxic very quickly. And it has nothing to do with sort of, it's not always about a sort of oppressive system versus, a, you know, one that's being, you know, in uh, a position of power. Magic. Like it's weird. Into the thing. Magic. Yes, we are going to end soon. Um, what do you want to end on? I want to end on saying this. You know, I do believe magic is real. Yes. I do believe it's a gift that the creative spark gave every life form. The ability, it's, you know, we might call it the sixth sense. We might call it whatever we're going to call it. It's that yeah. ability to tap in. It's that ability to know the gods are real and connect with them. It does not solve all your problems. No. Sometimes it creates more because people tap into it without knowledge or guidance and they become arrogant or whatever it is yeah if you're going to traverse the realms of magic i think you should do it with some sort of higher being in mind. and i also believe you should realize that uh, results matter if you start working and your life isn't going your way you're doing something wrong and don't blame other people every time I no know. you're doing something wrong yeah if you're projecting for success, money, love, whatever it is, and it is not happening, it's not because magic doesn't work. It's because you're doing something wrong. Because I can tell you right now, 
My life is gonna end at some point. Soon. <laughs> kidding. Got to Take it to a dark place. <laughs> no, I won't find it. No. Which one do you want? Uh, I was going to find the Supreme one, but I can't find it. Oh, this one. Yeah. This coven doesn't need a new Supreme. It needs a new rug. Brian would kill me. It's Levi's fine. very jealous of me. It's fine. But he also okay. admires Qualify me. Qualify that. He admires me. Well, he thinks okay. he's more intelligent than me. Wow, never said that. He does. But he also knows that I have something I'm holding back from him. I do. I do. Or some things. You know, so <laughs> I'm safe as long as I don't tell him everything. Then um, and then die. I'll be serial killed. You know, Not serial, you'll be the first. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Sith that, you know, killed Yeah, I know, master. yeah. Kill your master. Um, there can only be one, two. Can only be one to have power, one to crave it. Yeah. Um, I think that magic is very extremely important to what we do, and we believe in it. It's just, we believe in it logically. You know, it's, it does take effort. Like, we do it, we do it. We love doing it. And it works, it works. My life is literally like a very good Corrupted. example of that, you know, very quickly because some of us have to like brag about myself a little bit. Like I was saying, I'm, you know, I might leave by Levi decapitating me with a hatchet and then kissing my forehead and keeping it somewhere in his closet. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know why Maybe that's the, that's the end. This is I very specific. I feel. Drawn on okay, it here for the aesthetic though. You know, here for the season two Sabrina no. aesthetic. If but I'm gonna murder you. The reality of the I'll situation is. Uh, we actually do believe that it works, but we're conscious of the fact that it also can sometimes have a price because you're entering into something bigger than you are. We are stealing fire from heaven whenever we choose to interact with God in that way. Yeah. Not every human being, somebody asked earlier, does everyone have the gift of it? Yes, everyone has the potential to be psychic. Everyone has the potential to work magic, but there are certain individuals who are going to will, to will, to know, to dare, or to dare, actually, be, you know, to yeah. dare, well, both of them, all of them, right? Uh, you're going to go up there and you're going to be like, hello, God, I what? just want a bit of what this happened? for myself. Because it's not prayer. Some you know? extra for Mary Poppins is trying to talk <laughs> to Jesus. <laughs> like, like, Why do you have to ridicule me? Why did I let this one live? I should have ripped him off the teat. God. Um, because he's so goddamn smart. Yeah, I try my best. And sitting next to him, I look so goddamn young. Wow, I'm younger than you by a good margin, Deborah. Literally, um, technically, yes. <laughs> Not. <laughs> okay, well, we've reached the end of our time with you tonight. Um, Next week, we are actually going to do a subject. It's going to be covens. And so on that, yeah. we're going to end for the night. Good night, everyone. I'll watch this later and probably now be horrified. Can I tell you all this? Levi's actually one of my favorite priests. Just one yeah. of you know, I like them smart, sassy, and actually somebody paid you a very good compliment what? recently. They said, to Brian, usually when you're around people, you seem like you're controlling everyone. I don't get that from Levi. Oh, very that. good. And very I said, good. I said, well, don't you think that's not why I like him? And I said, no, you do. Yeah, I'm not. I actually, and I, that's true of my old coven, really. I, I actually don't. The people I control are not in my coven. <laughs> there you go. My coven are a bunch of Wicked demons. We are, are going to have a barbecue with my dead corpse someday. Little do they know it will be filled with nightshade and we'll all go together. <laughs> we'll all go together. <laughs> Good night, Cheers. everyone. There were no. covens in Europe. What? That's what they're called. No the, um, the, the congregation. Covens in Europe, in America, and in Australia. No, and they had one right here. That whole bunch. The, the parties with the know, singing right? and the flute and the chanting. Those are espas or sabbaths. I mean, or whatever don't get they're excited. Called. Huh? Read what they do, guy. They use blood in their rituals, and the blood that has the most power is baby's blood. 